So now we're going to do another form of the England Gambit that I've been playing frequently, um, and this will be the second in the, our installment of this particular version of the England Gambit, which um, is called the Fellbecker Gambit. So I don't know who Fellbecker is, but I thought I invented this Gambit, but obviously he did and developed it. And whoever Fellbecker is, I kind of like it a little. Um, although I think if White plays really well, it's just as bad as the England Gambit. So the England Gambit, as we know, is a really bad defense. And what the Fellbecker Gambit does is it develops the black squared um, bishop first um, in order to try to get less congestion in the black position. In other words, in, typically in the England Gambit, you're developing a queen to e7 in front of that bishop. And even though we see that kind of move made more and more in chess, especially by high-ranking players and like world champions, um, I'm not saying in the England Gambit, I'm just saying in general, clogging up your own space like that by uh, creating some sort of weird diagonal Alokine gun type thing with a bishop and a queen. Um, I think that what it does is it takes away the cramping that you usually find in the England Gambit. It might even be a little better than, a little sounder than the England Gambit. Um, however, I think with the right play by white, um, it will probably be just as bad. So we're going to look at this game right now and see if we can study it a little bit. So that's the Fellbecker Gambit there. So usually you would have played queen to e7, but this gets the bishop out. So there are a number of things to remember in this position, one of which is you have a very weak d5 square. And if possible, you want to put your knight on e7 to defend it, or maybe a pawn on c6, which is a little difficult at this point. And as we see, we're already basically one down. So we developed the knight where I, I said. Now, interesting, the engine likes knight to a4 here. So that's a, that's a pin, and it seems like whatever white does is uh, pretty decent here, so... Uh, it suggested kicking it, but very Petrosian-like, I didn't move any pawns in front of my king. He, uh, he's playing interestingly because it's uh, similar to the computer line. He backs up. Now it says a6. That's a very interesting type move, a6. Um, okay. Now it says all he has to do is play bishop to g3, and he's going to defend that pawn, because if I play knight to g6, he can come out with his queen to d5. So uh, bishop to g3 runs into knight to f5, and then he plays knight to d5, and I'm forced to probably lose my bishop. Okay, so he played bishop to c4, and now all of a sudden you have an equal game because knight to f5 takes that bishop off the board, <coughs> but I can almost guarantee you I didn't play it. So it's queen to d5 here now. So, we just take things off, <coughs> and voila, we have an even game, or virtually an even game. So he retreats his bishop to b3, and if anything, black is a slight edge. Knight to e4. Yeah, the, you know, that looked like a good move to me. Looks like he can just start dominating d6, but he probably can't. Okay. Now we definitely, yeah, it says white's better, but I think black is like even. So e4 is the right move here, and d4 is the right response. So this is all very even play at this point in the middle game. We didn't play the right move there according to the machine, but we have an edge. That says I should move bishop to f5. And yet every move I make is evaluated the same as the computer. The computer's move. Knight to d4. It's hard to suggest anything much better. You have developing rogues. Now it says c3. No. He, uh, he chases that. Now, I don't really understand the reason for that, because 
to me, there's no reason to get rid of that bishop there. So that I should have retreated to h5. Why he takes that is a mystery. Okay. He's beginning to give me an edge, that's why. He was planning on moving c4 and he wanted to get rid of that knight. That's the way he wanted to try to improve his position. Okay. And says I should uh, shift back and throw the mate, but I like taking the pawn first. I have the, that in mind, but of course if I had just taken the pawn first, uh, the e pawn becomes weak if he plays f4. Okay. Now we're fully developed. Now he moves his knight back. Now it says queen to e4 is a good move because it attacks the bishop. And I like him going over there which it says is a similar evaluation. And now he moves his rook in a place where he self pins. No, he doesn't. I'm sorry. That was the suggested move by Stockfish A, rook in F to D1. So he moves queen to C3, which is a blunder, because the G pawn's overloaded. And basically, this is a lost game now. So I didn't take it right away. Why didn't I take it right away? Well, it's a bit of an optical illusion here. If I take it right away, it's an easy win, right? One of the reasons is, is that I foresaw a problem with bishop takes f7 check that doesn't really exist. Because if he takes back and I take an f3, f7's covered by the queen. I don't have to take back with the king. On the other hand, he wants my bishop back. So let's look at this line for a second. It says he's supposed to move bishop to e2 and rook to d5. So let's just see what happens. Okay. If we take here, if he takes with check, he gets nothing because this bishop is covered. So if he takes back here, we go queen takes f3, right? Then if he checks, we take back, he takes the bishop, and he gets made by a bridged rook, right? Let's see. Says he should check first, which I think is silly. Now he gets rook to d5. So, we'll go back to the beginning of that. Bishop takes h3 is looking better and better and better, so I didn't play it. I prepared for it. So now he can save the day by moving queen to b3. Instead he makes his rook move a little late, and I take the pawn anyway. Since he absolutely cannot take back, And of course, here I miss a monster shot. Bishop checks, and, the, and there's a discovered attack on his rook. It's almost embarrassing I didn't play that. Still says I can do it. But look, I, I'm three up instead of four up, so. Now it's got that again. And the reason why it has it this time is because I take the f7 pawn with check and move to d2 with my rook. Bishop to b4. I stay up 3. I move my bishop back. And I'm still up 3, amazingly. And he moves his king, which is a terrible move in reality. Now he's at this point, he he lost. He resigned. After all this bad play by both of us. But I just wanted to show you the Phil Becker gambit, you know. He's going to move back. I'm going to take the A4 pawn, you know. And he's going to be down a whole piece, basically. So this is uh, the end of the game and today's lesson.